Okay, today is September 1st, actually, 2016. Um, visiting with uh, Denny Harris. And uh, just wanted to go back a little bit and, and uh, it, visit a little bit as far as uh, how you uh, came to eventually show up in Epworth, Iowa <laughs> for high school. So, you want to go back a little bit? And... Well, I was born and raised in Dubuque for. Um, actually 10 years of my school life and um, in the fall of 1962 my dad bought a farm which eventually became half of Thunder Hills and um, we built a house out here and I had a choice of either going into Dubuque or switching to Western Dubuque, and um, I... Uh, so you were, what grade were you at the... I was a sophomore. Okay. And... Uh, so you started out at senior? Senior. Okay. Right. It was just senior in Wallard in Dubuque at that okay. time. Yeah. So from uh, big high school to a small one, but I knew my godparents, Merle and Elaine Mazina, lived in Epworth, and their son Rod and I were best of friends ever since we were little and um, we used to go out there and, and help them make hay and so forth and so I knew a lot of kids that went to Western Dubuque and um, when it came to a choice why I decided I'd like to go to West Dubuque okay and so that um, was the that, that was, was my junior year which then. would have been 64 63 64 okay and um, it was a uh, I don't want to say it was a culture shock, but um, most of the students were either um, not wanted in their home schools or uh, you know, had gotten into a little bit of trouble and uh, were transferred to West Dubuque. But um, it, it was. It was a lot of farming kids, you know, um, as opposed to what it is now. I mean, right. yeah. um, you know, I I met um, Dave Whitert, um, who was in my class, and lived on Highway 20 over here. Um, when we were building our house here, <laughs> He rode up on a horse, and uh, he, he was going down to where Isaac Walton is now. They used to own that, and um, he was going to check on cattle there. <laughs> I thought, boy, I am in the sticks when <laughs> when this kid rode up on a horse. Was but, he bareback, or did he have a saddle? No, he had a saddle on, yeah. Uh, but, um, no, it was... Uh, it, I, I remember the first day of school, I had to... Uh, used to drive from Dubuque because we were not living in the house yet, so I would drive from Dubuque and park the car here and get on the school bus. So and, bus uh, uh, was available at that yes, time. Yes, yes. And uh, I thought, boy, I better look at the the sign as we go by Piazza so I know how to spell the address. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, there were only two, two houses on our road. And, okay. uh, what was the other house? Uh, Lochner's back here. Okay. Way in the back, like. Well, the farm back here? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, Ray Beerman was the bus driver. Okay. I know Ray. Yeah. And um, I was the last one to get on and one of the first ones to get off. Really? So. Okay. We, uh, uh, so, yeah, okay, at that time then you started the fall semester. Were you, uh, as far as athletics, were you eligible right away, or yes, how did yes. that work? Because we technically moved, okay, and it was not. Um, I guess our residency was considered out yes. here. <clears throat> did you uh, before that when you were at senior? Did, had you played athletics in there? And I did through junior high, um, and then my sophomore year of high school, I played. Um, football and basketball and um, 
when they found out I was moving, um, played very little after that. Oh, is that right? Yes. Um, okay. And I, Walt Kirk, who I saw many years after that, quite a few times, and um, he always, he would always shake his head and say, "Hi." <laughs> You guys, you guys, you, know, you guys almost cost me my job. <laughs> but it was. Uh, uh, so, who were some of the <clears throat> some of the teachers that you remember from <clears throat> from West Dubuque? From West Dubuque. Um, Dick Willu. Uh, I think it may have been his first year. I think I'm not exactly sure. Um, Paul Vossen. Wayne Thurm. Um, was Sporky there? Sporky yes. There. <laughs> was there. Yes. And uh, mm. Miss Williams. Helen Williams. <clears throat> and uh, let's see, who else? Well, Hermie was there and, That's right, Hermie and Wick. Was there. Um, Mrs. Hall had typing, but fell down the steps and broke her legs, so. Personal typing was taught by none other than Mr. Ralph Buckman. Okay. Two boys in the class and the rest girls, and they could type a little bit, and we could not type at all. And uh, it was <laughs> it was an interesting class. <laughs> you know, uh, that's a good point uh, because I remember when I was in high school, uh, a friend of mine, you <clears throat> know. I was a senior, he was a junior, he said, hey, let's take typing. I think you can do some girls or something. And so I agreed, and, and we got in this typing class. Well, I, I did learn keyboarding, mm -hmm. which became pretty important yes. after, after yeah. the computers came in. It was the, the first day he came in, and we go, oh, my. He had a big grin on his face. He said, all right, put a piece of paper in the... You know, and they weren't they weren't even electric, they were manual sure, sure. typewriters and put a piece of paper in, okay. And uh now take the cover out from underneath, put it over your head and type your name. <laughs> oh, a lot of sore fingers after that. Um, but uh it it was interesting because as a building principal all of a sudden you become a teacher for this class, yeah. you know, and uh, yeah, very good teacher, you know. Was uh, was like was a hot lunch going at that time? Yes, everything? yes. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of uh, portable classrooms outside. Okay. Yeah. Um, even, at that, even at that time. Yep. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> I can't remember. Schmeling was a German teacher at that time. They offered German. Um, he was related to Max Schmeling, the, was there the boxer. That's all I remember, yes. Yeah. Um, who else was there? Well, Phil Smith, obviously. Yeah, Phil would have been there for sure. Um, when Wick was there. When Wick. Um, so um, that was the fall, and uh, <clears throat> so he eventually hooked up with the basketball. Right. How did that go originally? It was it was a lot different than at senior, um, you know. And there were no there was no girls basketball right. either place, but um, practice time and sharing the gym and so forth with just the one. The one gym, and that being one of the newest ones in the area, yeah. if not, well, it was the newest. The new one, yeah. And uh, it was uh, it was an experience playing the other local high schools because you had students from all of those schools, right. you know, at Western Dubuque or former students from that. And uh, Wick was the head coach, and um, so that was I, your junior. That was my junior year. Yes. Okay. 
and um, Hermie was the sophomore coach at, okay. and then he would help with the varsity. Okay. Um, <clears throat> always had the pep band there, almost every game. Is there I mean, <laughs> and Phil Smith's pep band was not only good, but it was big. <laughs> well, see, that was that was always Phil's uh, philosophy because uh, you know I, I always thought well. Couldn't you just have a small group, you know, to be the pep band? But he said, no, I have to have everybody. Everybody there, everybody yes. Everybody there, so, okay. Yeah. And there were kids that were in the band that played basketball and that and um, was never a problem with practicing or, or anything else, you know. Yeah. Um, which was a lot different than it, it was at senior if you did one thing, you couldn't do the other, you know. And um, they're very willing to work with with students to let them do as many yeah. things as they could, you know. Um, so how did the how did that year go as far as basketball? Uh, it was a good year. Um, we. Uh, I don't know if we won the conference or not, but I think it was the first year we beat, or that Western Dubuque had beaten uh, Dyersville Xavier, I believe. Okay. And um, that was the first, that was the year before I came. I came the next year to St. Joe's. Uh, but um, okay, so then uh, you guys, you had a pretty good nucleus of guys that were going to be. Senior father gear, right? I same, mean, same players. Same outfit, yeah. We lost. We lost what, two, two seniors, I believe, that did not play a whole lot, you know. Yeah. But um, had been in the program the whole time, and yeah. Uh, well, yeah, Sharky Gasman. Um, Roger Tucker. Roger Tucker. Jim Rudin. Jim Rudin. Rod Mazina. Um, myself. Bill Pins. Roger Schuster. Um, Loris Kalb. Um, like I said, Dave Whiter, didn't I? Yeah. Yeah. Tom McAndrews. Okay. And. Um, <sighs> Who else was there? <clears throat> so did you guys, uh, did you win the conference then? Uh, the, uh, I, I, th I think we did. Because there was the, con well then there was also the, the conference, conference tournament. tournament. Right. Which <laughs> was standing room only and. I think that was huge. Oh, I, I couldn't believe that many people would. You know, but every small school had a big following. Well, back then, that there were not as many distractions. So right. Absolutely. Didn't have whatever we got now to entertain themselves. So. And nothing was on TV like it. <laughs> no. Like it is now. So. I'll never forget. Um, remember that Nubian outfit? Those those guys were huge. Steve Ray, Gene Cruzy. Yeah. And yes. So I never forget we play we play them in the. Tournament at Epworth, and this Father Benda was the coach, supposedly, and he didn't know much about basketball. Anyway, we uh, had the starting lineups. I want the starting lineups, so I'll go over to the bench and give them mine. And Father Benda comes over and he said, uh, Well, so and so is the center, and, and uh, uh, we got two guards, and what do you call those guys that stand in the corner? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah. how we got his starting lineup, and they were like enormous guys. Oh, <laughs> and and when you when you played them at New Vienna, oh, yeah, I mean they could literally touch hands, yeah. and be all the way across the court. Yeah, and the over and back line was <laughs> right by the other free throw line. Um, I remember, uh, we played one year. One year we played up there and. 
We had scored 48 points the first half and we were down by six. <laughs> uh, it was no out of bounds. <laughs> no. <laughs> and you play the restraining or yeah, rest- yeah, did they call it restraining line? I or? think so, something like that. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> we had guys that never did figure that out. <laughs> Years later, they're still talking about it, but um, yeah, Aquin was the other yeah. good sized gym. Yeah, you know. Um, How did you uh, fare as far as in the tournament at the end of the year? Well, we ended up because you didn't have all the different classes then. Right. Yeah, it was just. We, yeah. yeah. Um, we end up, I think we ended up playing like four games, but we didn't uh, we didn't make it to the district. I think okay. I, it was all new to me because yeah. we play again. Yeah, we play <laughs> play again. Um, is that was that? Do you remember if that was in Dubuque then, or we played? I think two or three games at West Dubuque. Okay. And um, then you would have either played Senior Wallard. Okay. Yeah. Now, yeah, that was that was my junior year. And then we, you either played baseball or ran track. Okay. And track was a, a starter program with right. Coach Hermson. And, uh, you know, he coached and drove the, the small bus and <laughs> did everything. Um, I, you know, we had a grass track. We had hurdles in that, but um, it uh, it got a little tense when Cliff Fobb had his motorcycle up on the on the grass track, weaving in and out of the hurdles. And <laughs> here comes Mr. Buckman. Oh my God! Oh, jeez! But you know, you 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 can't. You can't visualize what it was yeah. like up there on that hill. There was nothing there. Yeah. You know, I mean, it was it was kind of flat. You know, yeah. and um, they would line uh, just take some line marking and go around. You know, to make make a track. What they thought was uh, 440 yards. You know, yeah. but um, <laughs> it was. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Oh. Well, you know, I, and I, I must have climbed that hill All right, let's get rolling. 900 times, I guess. Okay. But I can never quite understand <clears throat> when they had a choice to make. Why they didn't, they didn't put it down below, it would have been natural. Right. You know, yes. to have it. <clears throat> and and uh, oh, the, breeze, the wind was just brutal, you know, especially in the spring. Five, yeah. Be home yeah, we uh, used to go up there for <laughs> for PE class, you know. And it was it was yeah, uh, touch football. Well, that didn't last long either. I mean, it got got pretty rough. See you, buddy. <laughs> See you tomorrow. <laughs> okay, maybe I'll put that cub sign up on your playhouse tomorrow. Okay. Oh, awesome. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Another Cub fan. Oh, geez. He went to school. He's in preschool. And he wore his Cub shirt the first day there. And the teacher said, Oh, I'm a Cub fan too. And he goes, Oh. She said, Who's your favorite player? And he rattles off about three of them. And she said, Well, do you know the numbers of any of them? He goes, Yep, one seven. <laughs> That's my favorite player. <laughs> Good friend. Yeah. Oh, jeez. <laughs> so. Along with three million other yeah. women and kids. Yeah. Oh, God. 
So, uh, that was, your senior year was 60. 65 is when I graduated. 64 and 65 would would have been my senior year. Then, uh, so what was your, then you had to decide what you wanted to do after graduation, so. Whether you, yeah, whether you took, uh, what did they call it, college prep or other classes, you know. Um, but I wasn't sure what I really wanted to do, but then I went to, ended up at UD to play basketball okay. and um, got in the education program there. And uh, then they switched coaches. Um, John Davison became the coach okay. there, his first year there. And um, then my last year at college, which I should have graduated in 1969, um, I got drafted in the Army. And I let myself get drafted because I could get out four months early to go back to school to do my student teaching. And um, it was a, a hassle every every semester to write a letter and send all this registration things in that you were in school and you know and uh, so finally I thought, well this might be the best way to go and uh, as it turned out I got out four months early anyway but um, it it was a good experience. Um, so where were you, where'd you go for the in service? I was at Fort Lewis, Washington, by Seattle and Tacoma. There um, went through basic training there and ended up staying there, um, working in a office that received orders from uh, the Pentagon as to who was going to go where, what, whether they were going to be infantry or artillery or whatever. And um, then I played a game called Team Handball, and uh, a good friend of mine who was an officer talked me into playing it, and um, it was an interesting game. Um, this is played, handball, not racquetball. Played like on a field. This was played like on a. Oh, okay. You know, it's close to the size of a football field, and um, it was going to be an exhibition game. It, it's an old European game, and it was going to be in the 1972 Olympics as an exhibition game, and um, someone in the army thought that it was going to be the next big game for kids to play and uh, it was this combination of, of like basketball and um, you can't you couldn't use your feet to kick the ball or anything and you could only take three steps you could dribble so what's the size of the three dribbles a little bit smaller than a volleyball because you could you could palm it okay. and there was a a goal like a soccer goal, a little bit smaller, and there was a uh, nine meter line semicircle that came out. You could you could not step inside that line if you had the ball in your hand. Okay. But you could run like heck down <laughs> down the court and take off from that line <laughs> and <laughs> here's the goalie going, oh, oh my God. <laughs> uh, but um I I played that um, just at Fort Lewis there, messing around, and then um, the Army was going to teach it to all the uh, reserve units. So there were three of us that they pulled out from a regular assignment to do this, and they would bring a different group of people in every week from 
all over the Sixth Army, which was Hawaii, California, Colorado. <clears throat> and um, then you would teach these guys how to play in that. Okay. And um, then I had orders. My orders came through to go to Vietnam, and um, this colonel that was in charge of us said, don't, don't worry, I already took care of it. That's fair, right? Yeah. Yeah. And um, then, about a month later, um, had orders again, and um, he said, I, I've taken care of it. <laughs> okay. But um, then we went, went to uh, uh, New Jersey and played in a, there were two army teams and uh, we played in a, in a tournament there and um, while we were there we went to West Point and yeah. taught the game to cadets and that, you know. And well, that was the greatest break you had oh, forever. It was. Wow. It was. It was awesome. Um, and then yeah. after this tournament, um, they wanted everybody to stay in and try out for the Olympics, you know. Well, I would have had to re-enlist for two years. <clears throat> I didn't think it was worth it. <laughs> yeah. But um, then I, my time was up and, and uh, came back and did my student teaching at Galena. And um, then got a job at, at uh, Jefferson Junior High teaching language arts. Taught that for one year and then uh, there was a physical education opening. So took that for... 32 years. <laughs> okay. And um, did coaching, and and uh, I even coached wrestling one year. Was really? Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> it was, my my friend was a wrestling coach, and they couldn't get anyone else to to help him. I, the uh, assistant principal Joe Wysocki said, "We really need somebody." <laughs> and George says, "All I want you to do is you come out, you make sure they're not screwing around when I'm teaching them stuff." And well, I knew because my brother Gary wrestled, so I I knew some of the moves that he would put on me, and and um, mm, yeah. So that was one. One for my experience, one year, that was enough. Um, I always got such a kick out of uh, Art Miller. And he'd bring those poor girls out oh. and yell and scream at those girls. And it didn't do any good. <laughs> oh no. God. Oh, jeez. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, that was brutal. We had, uh, well, they only had boys' track. And then, then they started with the girls' track also. <laughs> And um, so I went to girls track, and uh, it was it was a lot of fun. Um, <laughs> you 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 get to see the kids in a lot different light, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, in fact, I still run into two of them. I had the discus and shot putters, and and one lives in in Piasta. Maggie, it used to be Maggie Cavanaugh. Her kids go to West Dubuque. Okay. Her, her and her husband have a fire equipment business okay. of something, and um, mm. she, she, she could beat the boys <laughs> throwing them a shot. <laughs> so you spent all your your, your time at at, at Je Jefferson. Jefferson. Yes. Yeah. Um. And at that time, <clears throat> a lot of the, you didn't have a big turnover in faculty, yeah. you know, a, a few every year, but um, um, 
not like it was a little bit later on. I mean, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> well, then Dwayne and Joe were there, were there for forever. <laughs> yeah. The um, Dwayne was assistant principal when I started. Okay. And then Chet Schmidt was principal, and then two years after I started, then Chet retired, and, and Dwayne took over. Okay. And then Joe came a few years later. He was at a Beckman, he? he was a Beckman, and then he was at uh, Jones. Okay. At the shared time, <laughs> we we go out with them quite a bit with Joe and his wife. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Funny. Uh, um, <laughs> a lot of changes in the schools. Um, you, know, uh, you know, after you're in it as long as we were, you, re you realize that everything, all these concepts get recycled with different names. Nothing's new. But it's, always, it's just it's yeah. the same. <laughs> yeah. We had that Madeline Hunter. Oh, yes. <laughs> that old gal had it down to a T because she had the books, the workbooks, the tapes, and the movie. And whatever you wanted to buy, she. Uh, and that didn't last too long. I mean, they they could, you know, they sell somebody a. A bill of goods, and here it is. <laughs> yep. And they weren't. Why? Well, I, I couldn't believe. Like my junior year, when we went to Makokota for a track meet, and left Makokota, and we came up. I was lost, but towards Bernard, I guess. Yeah. And where we started to drop kids off. Yeah. <laughs> I thought, holy cow. Yeah. You know, and and they were getting up at, they were getting on the bus at 6 o'clock in the morning, in the dark. you know, um, and getting home at after 5. Um, I talked to Wayne about that, you know, when, when he... When the district was formed, um, the legislature required that it, to be a viable district, you had to have 300 students. Mm -hmm. And the problem was, here all the kids are going to the parochial schools. Right. Uh, so you just had to keep on expanding mm -hmm. so you could finally keep, get enough, enough yeah. numbers. And he said, when he talked to these different areas, to uh, meetings of you know farmers and people, um, they didn't care about any aspects of how you're going to be educated. All they no. worried about was the taxes. Of yes. <laughs> what's going to yes. <laughs> what's it going to do to my tax? <laughs> yes. So that was the main focal point of the formation of the of the district. But, you know, you had those kids, and then <clears throat> ones that were north of Luxembourg. Yeah. You know, and yeah, but, uh, I mean, if a guy started dating a, from Luxembourg, started dating a girl from Bernard, no. you're talking, <laughs> you know, 45 minutes, a long trip, or an hour. Yeah. 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 Mm hmm So. Yeah. I will never forget. Uh, I, I don't remember exactly what year it was that uh, we were playing West Dubuque at Farley. Might have been 68 or so. And uh, anyway, it was January. It was, it was playing the game, the varsity game. And I think it was into the, might have been the start of the fourth quarter and uh, some, I don't know, somebody called timeout. And, uh, all of a sudden, Father Dan Kepler came in the door, and he walked past our bench and he walked over to West Dubuque. And I found this out afterwards. He talked to Tom and he says, "Tom, I just got a phone call. He said that your house is on fire." <laughs> and, and so, 
Tom looks up at the scoreboard. It was tied. So I goes, <laughs> Herbie, would you go check that out? <laughs> And all, <laughs> all it basically was was that I think the babysitter had pushed the uh, crib, one of the kids' cribs, on top of the vent, oh. the furnace vent, and it started smoldering a little bit. <laughs> but, uh, but no way was Wick, Wick leaving that game. <laughs> no. We, we went to a few games with him in his, uh, I think it was a Comet. You were all right if you got front seat because oh, he had the seat cars. moved all the way oh. back. And, oh, if you were stuck in the back seat. Yeah. Um, I mean, uh, he never considered the vehicles he had were buying anything that was no. newer than, you know, 10 years old. No. And no. then, uh, well, eventually, I think they did buy a decent car for Brenda when she was teaching at... at uh, she was teaching at Farley. Is that when the kids were all in school? Yeah, then? yeah. And uh, every so often, because <clears throat> one of my jobs at the high school <laughs> was when somebody locked their keys in the car, I had a Slim Jim. I'd go out and open their car for them. Every so often, Wick would call me that Brenda had locked her keys in the car. <laughs> I'd have to go over to Farley. <laughs> stories about Wick. <laughs> we go to class reunions, you know. Um, it, it, it would be a very intense game, close, and uh, we could take a time out and you get over there and <laughs> well, I, yeah, yeah, I'd be <laughs> he'd be stammering around one of us would say, why don't we try yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, great great person. Oh, um, you know, and when, because uh, he and I were classmates at Loris, and so we were always to kind of, once, once I knew what was to do, quite. Anyway, administratively, I kept on moving. He stayed at Farley. I went to the high school, and uh, uh, then eventually, uh, I forget what year it was, he retired. And I knew that was the year that uh, we had a pretty good basketball team, but we also had a very rookie coach and, and uh, Jeff Frick. So I talked Wick into that was awesome becoming yeah. the assistant because I knew it needed a little guidance. You know? Yeah. Anyway, wow, that was <laughs> yeah <laughs> an awesome experience. Well, and that's what Tom said too. He said that was. From his aspect, yeah. it was really, you know, really I know how much it meant to him yes. to be a part of that yes. situation. <laughs> yeah, after all those years. Because yeah. his, what did he, I think he had two girls when, yeah. when I was a senior. Yeah, Sally and, and Lynn. Yeah, yeah. Because I remember <clears throat> my first year, uh, we played at Epworth, and afterwards he invites me over to the, his place. They were living at that farm. Right. Yes. And, uh, so I went. I went there for a couple beers, and I remember Lynn and Sally were both crawling around or whatever at that time. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Yeah, it was. It, it was a lot of fun having those guys as coaches. Um, not that it was easy, yeah. but it it wasn't the intensity that yeah. that I had had at senior anyway. You know, yeah. Um, okay. They treated everyone with a lot of respect, and um, <laughs> it was, and that was hard to do sometimes with some of them. Oh, oh yes. But you know, we have class reunions. Well. Our last one was our 50th, and um, we all decided we're not going to wait five years to have another one yeah. because Never know who's class gets smaller and smaller every year. And How many were in your class, you remember? 
there's a uh, there's a discrepancy there because we've never been able to find out exactly how many were in the class because some of them didn't graduate, didn't get a certificate. You know, um, I I want to say like 133 or seven or something like that. Yeah. Um, you know, that was the biggest class then. Well, yeah. You know, well, I came yeah. from a class of, I don't know what, we had a senior, 600 or something like that, 700. Yep, yeah, that was, that was, uh, so, uh, I mean, it was so ironic when the West Dubuque opens and there was like, I don't know how many kids they started with, but shit within six or seven years all the other schools were closed right and here they all are <laughs> right at your doorstep and, yeah and uh, of course the, the board and the public they just couldn't uh, quite understand that transition to the point where they they did pass a couple of small bond issues but boy nothing to get the job done no. until no. later on <clears throat> no and I think, you know, the, the, the people that wanted the bond issues and the board members and so forth, their tenacity in getting, keeping it in the forefront, yeah. I think had a lot to do with getting the last making it happen. 15 well, years and so forth. And the thing that, the thing that really saved our butts was the local option sales right. tax where it was a countywide instead goal. of just yeah. yeah yeah thank goodness yeah so but you know i i refereed football and basketball also <clears throat> football for a lot of years and you, you go to a lot of the small schools and um, you know it was still a big deal but you had maybe 15, 16 kids on the, on the sideline, you know, on the team. You just, you wonder what's going to happen. Oh, well, gonna keep on going. And um, my son-in-law, Dusty, there, he officiates football now, and he was saying they were at uh, MFL. And he said, boy. Yeah. You know, and and there's there's teams that have folded because yeah. they don't have enough kids. But that was the other thing is with the smaller schools, same way with the band. You know, kids would be in their football uniform and somebody would hand them their instrument, <laughs> play the on. national anthem, and you know, and and that always reminded me of West Dubuque when I started there. Yeah, um, everybody got. You had to work together to get anything done, and you know, yeah. and they did. <laughs> but that was yeah, that was. Uh, some... We played at Ryan one time, my yeah. junior year. Well, I played there. Cool. That was <laughs> that. You're was... lucky to get out of town. <laughs> <laughs> I can't think of the kid's name, but oh, he was supposed to be a real, real dandy. Of course, I just hear the reputation from all these other guys, you know. Yeah. Well, I'm sure they were talking about some of the guys who were on our team, too, with, with reputations. But, um, yeah, I walked in those places. But this is a gym, yeah. you know, after, you know, Cedar Rapids, Davenport, you go to all those, yeah. you know, Moline, Rock Island. <laughs> and, or Seniors Gym, you know. I mean, that Seniors Gym is still big, yeah, you know. Yeah, isn't that amazing that... Facility has stood the test of time for still a nice facility. Yes. Yeah. Mm. I'll never forget uh, Bill Jans and I went into uh, senior one night to watch a basketball game because they were playing Lindmar and the kid, the Bohannon kid, the mm -hmm. oldest one, mm -hmm. was playing. And so we're. Uh, Right inside the door, <clears throat> thinking the bleachers there, and uh, 
I, I know all of a sudden I see Bob Beersley comes in and he's he's sitting there and, and uh, um, I don't know, just before or after the half, in walks Bo Ryan and his assistant Gary Close to watch Bo Hannon. Well, as soon as as soon as Ryan comes in the door, Beardsley jumps up and runs over and starts talking to him. And all, then all of a sudden he's showing him a magic trick. <laughs> and they're both laughing, but he went through the whole thing. <laughs> but see, I think, I think Bo Ryan was into the... I know he was into the tricks, but uh, yeah, yeah. I mean the magic. Okay. I think. Okay. Well, that would that would maybe there was maybe there was a connection. Yeah, there could have been, but yeah, that would. <laughs> oh, it is. Because yeah, we, my senior year, then we played. At senior, we played senior then for the. What would have been. Sectional. Sectional or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, and um, then we beat them, which was a huge upset. Yeah. <laughs> um, not so much for us. I knew all those well, kids. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, it, it, was, it was devastating for some of them because I don't think they really thought... No, they didn't think that was going to happen. It would even be a game. Who did you play then? Remember? Waller. Well, you did play well. Okay. For the uh, title. Yeah. And uh, it was a good game. Close most of the way. Is that what Jack Aniski was playing for? Jack Aniski and Burbach. Um, Conlon. Conlon, Mel Cushion. Yeah. Those are good ball players. Yeah. They were big. A lot um, bigger than we were. Mm-hmm. And we were, I, we were, we were not big. I mean, um, six three, six four, six four, six four. Yeah, you know, that's big back then. Big back then, yes. Yeah. And now it would be big. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Realistically. Yeah. Um, I don't know where so many of the big kids have gone to, but um, you don't. You don't see the in between kids. Yeah. You know, they're either yeah. six eight or six nine and well, Dennis, or six two. Uh, Dennis indi- says there's a Johnson kid that's coming up that's gonna be about six nine or ten, he thought. Um, well if Dennis is measuring that means it'd be about six six. <laughs> <don't know>. <laughs> when, he, when he had D- DJ Link down his six foot the one time. I thought, oh, wait a minute here. Uh, Dreamer. Yeah. TJ's going to light it up at the U.S. here, huh? Yeah. Oh, good. I was talking to uh, Robbie Sieverding. He said they're really going to be down this year. You know, well, when you lose what he's lost. um, Yeah. But, um, with a facility like the U has, yeah. you know, you're, but it, it, it's very difficult to recruit kids today. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And I, I don't understand, I guess I understand in a way, but so many local kids, I, I think they're told they can they're better than they are and can play at that next level but but so many of them go and then yeah. end up not playing and not enjoying their experience what, you know um, something that they always enjoyed doing and all of a sudden they don't get to do it anymore yeah. you know yeah. well let's up your time here but thanks for Oh, no problem. Sharing? No problem. It was, uh, like I said, it was an experience on the, the first day. You know, and, and like I said, I knew a lot of the kids. Around that